You're about to find out what it looks like when a school bus crashes. Video that will make any parent cringe, along with the knowledge most of those buses don't have seatbelts. Regulators say they're safe, but could they be safer? Here's ABC's Paula Ferris. Accidents like these unfold in just a fraction of a second. Everybody all right? But the images of mangled buses and shell-shocked students linger long after school bus crash sites have been cleared. Which is why we're here to watch nine tons of steel smash to a standstill. With high-speed cameras, this team of engineers is able to freeze time to analyze in remarkable detail what happens when a school bus crashes to the vehicle and its precious passengers, who more often than not aren't wearing seatbelts. We can do better when it comes to safety. That's how we learn is actually crashing buses and evaluating, studying the films. Um, but we're going to find that we can do better than what is offered today. The results of this crash test in a moment, but first the debate, because for years, parents and safety advocates have questioned why most school buses are not equipped with seat belts. It might seem like an obvious question, but according to government officials, it's not that simple. This is where it's always challenging because you're taking a system that's already safe and then you're saying make it safer. But what you don't want to do is have any unintended consequences. Nearly 24 million students commute on school buses every day. Every year, a few thousand are injured, and an average of five are killed in crashes. 911, where's your emergency? Yes, a school bus just ran into the underpass at Emerson and uh, English Avenue. But when tragedy strikes, like on this morning in Indianapolis... Was there any kids on the bus? Yes, yes. I believe my daughter will still be here if she had on a seatbelt. Her five-year-old daughter, Donesty, was on her way to school. <laughs> it's like it's fresh every day. When her bus slammed head-on into a bridge. I didn't think that my center with her daddy to get on a bus. She'll never come back. Michael Watkins was on the same bus that morning. I remember every time she got on the bus, she had candy. She always shared with everybody. But he doesn't remember the accident. He fell asleep on the way to school. I woke up. Then I just heard a lot of sirens and screaming. And then I just felt somebody touching me, and it hurt. His leg, his femur, broken. Do you think that he would have suffered the extent of those injuries had he been wearing a seatbelt? All I know is he wasn't in one, and he ended up with a broken femur, two surgeries, a wheelchair, walker therapy. U.S. regulations only require seatbelts on school buses under 10,000 pounds, and only six states require all school buses to be equipped with seatbelts. A big difference from many click it or ticket laws across the nation that require us to belt up in cars. When you get in your mom's car, what's the first thing you do? I put on my seatbelt. But you don't have to wear a seatbelt on a school bus. Does it make sense to you? No. If you don't wear a seatbelt in the car, you got to wear it in the, on the bus too. But there's not one on a bus. That's because school buses have been specifically designed to protect children without the use of seatbelts. We're talking about engineering concepts and physics concepts. The National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, does not make policy, but Chris Poland is part of their team that investigates serious school bus crashes and makes safety recommendations. We're talking about the science of the school bus, and I don't think that's well portrayed to the average mom and dad. We have a school bus that works extremely well, large, heavy vehicle, bright colors, lights. We have compartmentalization, which protects occupants in the most frequent crash, which is frontal crashes. Compartmentalization refers to the high back seats that are like a protective envelope absorbing energy during a crash. These design features are one of the reasons federal regulations do not require seat belts on larger school buses. The vehicle itself has been designed for safety, yet when you look inside, we think lap and shoulder belts can add and reduce injuries and fatalities. Emmy, one of the leading school bus seatbelt providers, invited ABC News for a first-hand look at how they think they can improve school buses. Larry Gray is Emmy's CEO and top engineer. So we're kind of getting a preview of the point of view from the cameras that are from on inside, board. Inside the bus, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you see, these will be high-speed videos, again, about a 1,000 frames per second. We have dummies that have 
a lot of instrumentation in them. So the dummies aren't so dumb. They're not They're so going to be telling us a lot. They're going to be telling us a lot. A whole lot. On the bus, 12 school-age dummies in various positions. Only four are belted. We have 20 different cameras rigged up. This bus right here is going to crash into that wall 30 miles an hour. I'm a little nervous. Three, two, one. Oh, my gosh. So let's see the extent of the damage. This kid that was leaning over, look at what he did to the seat. He bent the seat in half. When the occupant hits the back, um, it does deform and absorb energy. That seat back doing what it's designed to do. But when they're out of their compartment or when they're not properly faced, they're going to come out of their compartment. Using an industry measurement called injury criteria, Emmy says the crash test dummies without restraints fare much worse than the ones built it in. Lap and shoulder belts reduce injuries by 50%, not just frontals, but all forms of accidents. 50%? That's a statistic that NHTSA has. If you're in a side impact and you're restrained, that's going to be better than being unrestrained and just thrown. And Emmy says this is especially apparent in more uncommon accidents like side impacts and rollovers. This is very dramatic. They're thrown throughout the vehicle and they hit hard surfaces or the roof of the vehicle. Seat belts save lives. We wanted to see what NHTSA, the government agency responsible for school bus safety regulations, had to say about this new data. For years, their position, spelled out plainly on their website, has been school buses are one of the safest forms of transportation without seat belts and have raised concerns that higher costs of buses with seat belts could result in fewer buses and more students commuting in passenger cars where they are 20 times more likely to die in an accident. But when I went to see them, suddenly, a different story. Do you believe school buses would be safer with safety belts? Our job is to help save lives and prevent injuries. And our kids are precious. Every single day they go to and from school, we want them to be safe. And we know seat belts save lives. If seat belts save lives, why isn't there a federal mandate? Everything's on the table for us to look at. Just weeks into his new role as NHTSA's top dog, Mark Rosekind is now promising a full review. Is this an about face for your agency? I'm the new guy, fresh eyes. Does that mean we might change things? We may. And again, it's not just about the word, it's actions. We're going to look for every action we could take to help those kids be safer. It remains to be seen whether this review will lead to new regulations. If it does, it could also provide a small measure of purpose to a grieving mother like Danielle. My baby was a sacrifice. That will be her legacy. For Nightline, I'm Paula Ferris in Indianapolis.